Hello, hello, hello. This is Doc Hogg, and welcome to another episode of Comics and Variety. If you like this channel, please do subscribe, hit the notification bell to be notified when I post new videos, and for the sake of YouTube's search algorithm, please do hit the like button. Okay, as you probably know, Tilt was my first crowdfunded comic book campaign, and of course it was successful. I met my fundraising goal, and then I met my stretch goal, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that today. I'm going to talk about why, uh, why it was successful, and if you are thinking about launching your first campaign, um, what you're going to, what I'm going to talk about today, I think you will find that very useful. Um, speaking of Tilt, it is still in demand, but there are only a very few uh, number of books left so do back it as soon as you can and in case you don't know the sign up page for tilt part two is now live it is superheroes meet the sopranos and the sopranos get whacked the actual campaign will launch probably in late september but you should sign up now because if you do you will get a free tilt magnet with your purchase and this is what will be on the magnet see i told you it would be awesome if you sign up before the campaign launches, you will be receiving a free Tilt magnet. I don't know exactly what image from Tilt 2 I'm going to put on that magnet yet, but I can guarantee you it will be awesome. So do sign up today. The link to that and the link to the Tilt campaign uh, is in the description below. Anyway, the link to the sign-up page is in the description below. If you haven't yet done so, head on over there and sign up for Tilt Part 2. So if you want your first campaign to be successful, it's important to set a realistic fundraising goal. And you want to do this for a couple of reasons. First, the more reasonable your goal, the more likely it is that people will back your book. If they see that you're only trying to reach, you know, a, a fairly small goal, uh, if they can say to themselves, you know, this comic doesn't have that far to go to, uh, to actually get there, and hence, you know, I'm likely to uh, actually get my stuff if I back it, then they're more likely to, to part with their money. On the other hand, if they see that you have a very long way to go, um, then, you know, they're just, they're not as likely to back it. Second, as the campaign goes on, um, you are going to be sweating it out. Oh, sorry, I'm sweating, but if I don't, I'll explode. Indeed, you might feel that way. Why? Well, um, take a look here at my funding graph for, uh, for Tilt. Uh, as you'll see, there are times when you get, uh, you know, quite a few backers, a lot of money coming in. But then you're going to have extended periods here, a couple of days at least, of uh, getting no backers, having no money coming in. And at those times, you're going to feel really, really uh, anxious. Um, well, you know, what do you do about that? Well, one thing is to have a very realistic fundraising goal. The more realistic your, your, your goal, the more it is in your mind that you think that, you know, you're going to make it, um, the less, uh, less anxious uh, you're going to feel. So how do you come up with a realistic number for your fundraising goal? Well, I think there are five important questions that you need to answer. First... What I mean by that is, what is your reputation in, com in, in comics? Are you Dan Fraga or Adam Post? Or are you Ethan Van Skyver? Yes, Ethan gets all that comic book money and gets to be a stud and gets all those chicks. Damn lucky son of a b Anyway. Uh, if you are that well known in the comic book industry, then setting a goal of ten thousand dollars, you know, no problem. But if you are like me, effectively a nobody, then you better set it a lot lower. And one reason is that people don't know uh, if you will actually, you know, fill your, fulfill your campaign, uh, or if you're going to be a Zoe Quinn. If you want to look good and not be bummy, yo, you better give me that money. <laughs> So um, yeah, don't do uh, don't do that. 
But seriously, though, you're building, a, you're, tr you're trying to build a reputation here, and as a nobody, you don't really have one, and so people aren't going to really start trusting you until you actually fulfill your first campaign. So if it's your first campaign, and if you're a nobody, the realistic thing to do is set your fundraising goal lower. Second, how many YouTube subscribers do you have? If your YouTube channel has 100,000 subscribers, like, say, your boy Zach, then again, you can probably set your fundraising goal a lot higher at $10,000, for instance. But if you're like me and you only have about 200 subscribers, or you're like many creators and you have no YouTube channel at all, uh, then you better set it a lot lower. Uh, third, have you done any networking? That is, are you trying to meet potential backers? Are you trying to meet people who might actually promote your comic on Twitter and, and elsewhere? And yeah, I think that's really the best way to network right now is probably Twitter, although you know some Facebook sites are pretty good too. Yes, Twitter is at times a shit show these days, but it can be useful. Um, there are comic book groups you can join on Twitter that are good for networking. Anyway, you network by interacting on Twitter with these folks. You, uh, for the creators, you retweet some of the stuff they are uh, they are promoting. And maybe I think, and, and maybe I think the best thing that you can do is to create your own tweets promoting other people's comics, kind of like this. You mention the title, uh, something about it that looks good, a link to their Indiegogo page, or in some cases the Kickstarter page, and then, and, and this is key, you include the creator's Twitter, Twitter handle in the tweet. Um, that way it will end up in their Twitter alerts, they'll see that you are promoting their work without you know, them even having to ask you. And that helps you build some goodwill among other creators. And, you know, other folks on Twitter see it, too. They think more highly of you, and, you know, they might actually uh, back your comic book when your time comes. A and finally, on this networking point, if you have a YouTube channel and you do live streams, you know, host creators on your show to promote their comics. Again, it, it, it builds up goodwill. Uh, go out and track them down on Twitter if you have to. And if you make videos like I do, spend part of your video uh, promoting uh, their comic book. Again, you know, reach out to them on Twitter, ask them about the comic and for a few things to help you promote it, and then do it. Again, you're trying to build up some good feeling here. Uh, hopefully that will be, you know, reciprocated when, um, you know, you go to launch your campaign. The final point on this is that the sooner you can start that, the higher your goal can be. I started almost a year before I launched my comic on Indiegogo. Now, if you can only do that for a few weeks before you launch, consider, you know, setting your, consider setting your fundraising goal at, at $1,000 or less. But if you've been doing that networking for a while, you know, then I think you can go a bit higher. Fourth, um, how is the economy? Uh, that's more important than you might think. You know, if the economy is in a slump, people are going to be a bit more hesitant to spend money on a crowdfunded project and even less likely to do so on a first-timer. Um, I launched mine just as the COVID pandemic was getting underway. Um, I was thinking that I was going to have a goal of around $4,000, but after talking to this friend of mine, we talked it over and I decided to lower it to $3,000 because the economy really was, you know, about to be shut down. And that may have been the best decision I made. Okay, fifth, how many YouTube shows can you do during your campaign? Um, going on YouTube shows is the best way to get backers. Yes, promoting on Twitter and Facebook is good, but you will get the majority of your backers when they see you talking about it on you know, someone's live stream. Go on as many shows as you can. Seriously, I went on over 30 shows during my 60-day campaign, and I will do that again if I can for issue two of Tilt. Um, I'm going to talk more about going on YouTube shows in a later video, how to get on them and so forth. But the more that you think you can go on, the higher your goal uh, you know, can be. Uh, but if you are time constrained and you can't do it, can't go on as many, then you know, keep your goal lower. I'll have more on how to run a successful first campaign in later videos. But uh, for now, that's all. And until next time, have a very nice day. If you want to look good and not be bummy, yo, you better give me that money.